Blinding is one of several key processes built into experimental designs. It's where the people involved in the experiment purposely choose not to know some of the experimental details, because if they did, this could unintentionally influence the experimental results and could lead to what is known as subjective bias. Blinding, therefore, reduces bias. Reducing bias means that researchers are more likely to obtain reliable and reproducible data, which could save time, money and reduce animal use. The types of blinding we will consider are Blinding to intervention. Here, none of the people involved in the experiment know which animals have been assigned to which treatment or procedure. And blinding during result assessment and data analysis. This is where the people taking the measurements and who process and analyze the experimental results are unaware which results or data set belong to which treatment or procedure. Let's look at a specific example. Imagine you're a researcher testing a new drug to see if it is an analgesic. You'll compare it with morphine and use saline as a control. The test system you've chosen is called the hot plate test. Your experimental unit is the mouse, and all the mice look identical. You've clearly defined your endpoint criteria in order to make your measurements, in this case, the time in seconds for the mouse to respond to the heat. You've worked out your sample size and how many mice are in each treatment group, developed an experimental plan where each mouse gets one treatment by injection, and you've decided how your randomized dosing sequence will be generated. You've also decided how you'll gather your data and thought about which type of statistical analysis is the correct one to use. So you're all set up and ready to go. You've made up your range of different solutions in identical tubes and labelled them new test drug, morphine and saline with appropriate doses. You're now ready to fill the syringes, one for each mouse. You could label the syringes so that you know which solution is in each syringe and then inject each mouse according to an appropriate randomised sequence. But do you think it might be possible that, without meaning to, you might handle the mice differently if you know which treatment each is to have? And if it's known which treatment a mouse has been administered, could this inadvertently influence your measurements or the way you or other people involved care for the animals? Why not ask a colleague, not directly involved in the experiment, to relabel each syringe using a secret code? Here's how it works. You would make up and label all your solutions, Fill the syringes, one for each mouse, labelled with the treatment and dose. Your colleague would generate a randomised dosing sequence, relabel each syringe using a secret code, keep the secret code hidden. That way, you and anyone else involved in the experiment are blind to the treatment each mouse is given. This is an example of blinding to intervention. You now carry out the experiment, taking and recording your measurements, blinded to the treatment each mouse has had. Your raw data are ready. You could reveal the code now, but you'd know which data set is from your new test drug. Might this unintentionally influence your data processing and analysis? Why not do the data analysis first and then reveal the code? These are examples of blinding during result assessment and data analysis. There are, however, some aspects of experimental design that you just can't blind to. For example, imagine your experiment involves comparing blood glucose levels in obese and non-obese mice. You can blind when measuring glucose levels in the different blood samples and when you analyse the results, but you can't blind to which mouse is which when you take the blood. Fortunately, in cases where blinding every aspect of the experiment is not possible, with careful experimental design and planning to include other ways of reducing bias, such as randomization, your results should still be reliable. <laughs>